How's it going? My name is Steven Christian. I'm a medical student. I'm a STEM educator and I'm a visual artist. So I'm a big game player, but I don't make games. I make art, especially in AR. And so I started thinking about how can I combine the two to where there's a game element to the art that I make. And so I decided to explore this idea of an augmented maze and make a course about it. In this course, we'll learn how to make a maze that you can control using real world physics in augmented reality. We will cover a bunch of topics from designing a maze, making a 3D model of the maze, using the Unity physics system to control a ball navigating the maze, and making the experience available in augmented reality for you to use and play with. It's all about interactions with this. And so if you want to learn more about this, check it out at stuckoneisland.com slash courses. Before we get started with the tutorial, I just want to let you know about some things. As you know, I make a lot of this stuff available for free so that you can learn and level up your skill set, you know, at a very low cost. But there are ways for you to support me. First and foremost, I'm on Skillshare. And so go to Skillshare.com slash stuck on an island and follow me and check out some of my courses that I have there. I have all the courses you see on my YouTube channel and many more. You can also support me on Patreon at Patreon.com slash Iltopia. Here, you could have subscriptions that are monthly or yearly, and you get access to my Discord group and a lot of sneak peeks of things that are coming out soon, from comics to new courses. You have a variety of tiers and stuff that you could support, so definitely check it out. You could go to shop.iltopia.com, and it'll take you to this wonderful page that allows you to check out all my books, coloring books, augmented reality experiences, plushies, toys, and many more. This allows you to support my work and any of the stuff that I produce and put out there. All the proceeds go to funding all these projects that I release out for free on the internet, as well as paying for medical school. Because as you know, I'm a medical student as well. Last but not least, follow me on all the social nets. Okay, so welcome to augmented reality maze where we're going to be creating a maze that you could navigate in augmented reality and so before we get started this course is best for intermediate creators those that are familiar with the unity game engine those that have done some ar stuff before it's not necessary really the main thing is knowing how to navigate the unity game engine before you want to take on this tutorial it's not necessary because the steps are pretty easy to follow. And so even if you've never used Unity before, um, you could follow along. But if you have experience with Unity, that's the best part. And so the agenda for this course is obviously we're going to design a maze. We're going to set up Unity. We're going to import the Vuforia SDK. We're going to set up an augmented reality image target. We're going to build the maze designed with Pro Builder, and then we're going to add a controller to navigate the maze. Should be fun. And the tools you'll need are obviously a computer, either a PC or a Mac. This will not work with a Chromebook or an iPad, unfortunately. So you'll need a desktop or laptop. And then we'll need the Unity game engine, which we'll download as well as the Vuforia SDK, which we'll download as well. You will need a picture because uh, that's how image targets work. And so you can either have the picture on your phone or you could have it printed out. And again, this would be based off of our maze or it could be any picture that you want to augment with the maze on it. I think that's the best part about Unity is an augmented reality is that you don't need the exact picture to create an AR experience. Uh, you can literally augment anything. And then lastly, we'll need a webcam. Uh, a webcam is uh, best, it's the easiest. That's why we're using the Vuforia SDK because it supports webcam AR to test. Uh, this is really a, a, a concept of AR and exploring the concept of AR rather than uh, teaching you how to develop for mobile devices specifically. And so we will not be testing with a phone but if you know how to build to an Android phone or an iPhone, 
you can test it then. Uh, but the easiest way uh, with the Vuforia SDK, the easiest way is with the webcam. And so if you don't have a webcam, uh, feel free to use your phone and build it out to a device. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to design a maze image. And this is really focused on uh, looking up images of mazes and then designing it with whatever program that you want. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Google Drawings for it. Uh, but you could use Photoshop, you could use Krita, Clip Studio Paint. There's a lot of different things you could use to uh, create your design. And so with that, let's go ahead and get to designing. Okay, so what I have here is I have my uh, Google Drawing opened. And with my Google Drawing open, I'll just call this Maze Design. And I also have some references here. And it's always good to have references because if you have references, then you're able to build experiences out that are grounded in something. And so I have uh, a lovely Google search bar open and I could search for different mazes. And so with it, I could use Google drawings and I could create shapes. I could create lines. There's a lot of different stuff that I could do. And so what I'll do is I'll just first start off by just having a box and just design in a box with that. And I'll make sure that the, the width is going to be very thick because I want to have a very thick border so it's easier to, to build. And so I think I chose 24, uh, 24 pixels as the line width. And so now with that, now that I have my border, I'm going to just create some lines. And so with this, I'll actually make this transparent so that I don't, I don't need to use it like that anymore. Okay. And so then, uh, if you want to make straight lines, so vertical lines or horizontal lines, uh, you could hold shift and it'll snap to, it'll snap in place. So as you can see, I'm sort of using this free-handed right now, but if I hold a shift, then it snaps things into place. And so with this, again, I want to make the lines sort of thick. And I can model it after some of these designs here. So I kind of like this design here, uh, this fabric made. So I think I will do something based off of that. So I'll go through, just make my design. Like that, add another image. have you know I'll tweak it a little bit so I'll add something here and add that there I'll add like a little lip there and I'll move this over like that And then what I'll do is I'll say, I want them to get to this part here. So I'll say, this is, this is my goal. You don't have to have a goal, but it's always good to have a goal. So I'll say that like, that's my goal, my goal right there. And so with my goal set, I'll have this. Oops. that there boom uh, yeah just make that a little bit higher like that so I'll just make it a little wider perfect
And what I want to do is I can make this sort of a windy road. Yeah, I'll make this a windy road. Make this a little longer. Make it like that. Yep, so now it goes around. And then you go up. You go around like that. And then you come down. Just like that. So that's, that's, that's my maze. That's what I got. And so with this maze, uh, I'm going to be able to uh, make something that works. And with you, go ahead and try to try to make your own maze. And so with activity one, right, you saw how I was able to make a maze. And so now it's time to make you, your own maze. And so with this, make your own design using a graphics editor program and be sure to use any references if you need to. It's all about creating an image and then being able to uh, add it to a AR experience. So the next step that we're going to do is we're going to uh, set up Unity. And so Unity is a game engine. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll download it and install it if you don't already have it. And then we'll open up a new project and the Unity game engine. And so I'm here at unity.com. And for those that don't know, Unity is the game engine that we're using for building our AR stuff. It's a great program. It's very diverse and it allows you to do a lot of great things from games to animation to AR stuff to engineering and construction. There's a lot of stuff that you can do for a lot of different platforms. And so to get started, we'll just go ahead and click get started. Uh, it'll automatically take you to this page that you want, uh, but this is for teams and businesses. You go to individuals and it's going to be free for students and personal. I will say that it's probably easier to get set up with a personal account than a student account right now, just because there's a, a, a eligibility process that you have to go through. And so for this one, as long as you don't make $100,000 in uh, funding in the last 12 months, you could uh, use this for free. And uh, this one you actually have to sign up for and you have to submit a lot of verification. So it doesn't immediately set you up with it. And so with this, right? We will go ahead and click get started. And if you're a first time user, you just click get started, agree and download, and it will download the Unity SDK. If you're a returning user, it's going to ask for you to, you know, click here and then download the Unity Hub and, uh, and go from there. But I already have it downloaded, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, but those are the two ways to get started with it. And so once you have Unity opened, You'll start off with the Unity Hub, which is where it will download. And just a brief rundown of what Unity, the Unity Hub is, it's essentially a portal for you to open up your projects. And so the way it works is you have your projects here. You can add projects and you can create projects with the new button. Uh, and these are the list of projects that I already have. Uh, if you want to learn how to use Unity, there's micro games and tutorials and walkthroughs for you to use in the Unity Learn tab. Then we have the community tab, which is for blogs, forums, uh, all the community-based stuff that other users are using and, and sharing. And then you have the installs here. And so installs are where you install your Unity editor versions. As you can see, I have a lot of editor versions because I use a lot of different tools. And we'll get it started, right? So to download a Unity editor version, we'll click Add. And then we'll click for the recommended release. Official releases are cool. Uh, Pre-releases, those are very buggy. And so if you want to try out new features before they release, you can. Otherwise, I'll do the recommended release. And uh, you click Next. 
I already have a dev tool installed, but if you don't, you don't. click Visual Studio uh, Community and have that downloaded. And with this, you wanna make sure that you have Android build support and iOS build support, uh, because that's what uh, the Unity SDK for Vuforia supports. And so even though we're not pushing to a mobile device, we will be utilizing uh, the tools for mobile devices for this. And so after you do that, again, make sure all these are checked. Then you click next, click I have read, next, agree to the terms, and then click done and it'll start downloading. I'm not gonna download this version, but uh, cause I have tons of versions already. But if you um, need a version, feel free to download a new version. So with that, I'm going to click the arrow right here and I'm gonna click the latest version that I have. And when I open it, it's gonna have some templates that I could use. And as you can see, these templates are 2D, 3D, HD, high definition render pipeline, uh, universal render pipeline, micro games and stuff. Don't worry about these. All we're gonna worry about is the, the, the 3D template. That's the main one that we want. It's sort of the basic template that, uh, that Unity uses. And we just wanna start fresh. And so I'll say uh, AR Maze Tutorial. I'll just say AR Maze Tutorial and I have a location on my hard drive where I save all my project files and I'll just click create. Okay, so now that we have our Unity version, I'll just give you a quick rundown of how Unity works. So in the left, we have our hierarchy, and this is where all our game objects are. And what game objects are, they're objects that you have in your scene that have different properties. And so if I click the main camera, you would see over on the right in our inspector, we have a camera property or a camera component, and we would have an audio listener because cameras have microphones and they have lenses, right? Then uh, in my directional light, we have a, a light component. And you can move you can move these with the, the transform tools and the rotation tools. So position, rotation, and scale are the transform tools to modify each game object. And uh, in ways you could convert game objects so I could turn this camera or this light into a camera with the with the different components down here. So camera. Right? I could add a camera component and now it could be a light with the camera. Uh, there's a lot of different things you could do with game objects, but uh, that's just a rundown of them. This is our scene view, and the scene view allows us to uh, create or look at all the stuff, you know, in a 3D space. And then we have a game view, which is pretty much the view that we see from the camera. And so we have a main camera here, and you could give a preview of what that game view is, and then you'll actually see that game view right there. We have the asset store, which allows us to get a whole bunch of assets, one of the best places to have. And then we have our projects. This is pretty much our file organization. So any of the files in our project, we can access here. And then our console is where we get all the uh, different uh, errors and stuff that we could uh, that we could try to figure out in debug, because this is a developer tool. And so uh, debugging is part of it. And so in file, again, I always want to start with the save. And then I will go to build settings, so file build settings. And this is where I want to change the build settings to an Android platform or a mobile platform in general. And so I like Android because it's a lot easier to navigate, uh, especially when we're building stuff out. Um, and if you have an iPhone, you could do that as well. The only thing is you could only publish or develop for an, you could only publish to an iPhone from an Apple device. So if you have a PC, it's probably best to start with Android just because uh, you can't really you know, distribute to an Apple device, even if you have one, uh, if you don't have a, a Mac. So I'll go ahead, quick switch platform, and you'll notice that the icon here is going to change to uh, the Android, and that'll let me know that the icon is there, and we're in the Android part. Perfect. And so then I'll click player settings, and there's a couple of things that I need to do. So one thing is I need to go from gamma to linear space. 
and that's just to change the rendering of the uh, the lights and then I will also want to go to quality and with quality I want to go down to medium and medium is going to uh, make it a little more optimized and from there I believe that I have all the stuff that I need yep so from there let's actually get everything set up now okay so now that we have our unity game engine installed and it's open it's time to import the Vuforia engine SDK and all this does is it allows for you to enable unity to do some AR stuff mainly with our webcam there's other AR uh, SDKs out there but very few of them actually allow you to use your webcam to test stuff out and so that's why Vuforia is a really good one um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to test it out uh, we're going to download the Vuforia SDK we're going to import it into our project and then we're going to uh, enable unity to uh, do some AR stuff and so we're here on the Vuforia website right and what the Vuforia website this is uh, it's at developer.vuforia.com and you go through you're probably gonna have to sign up for an account uh, but the account is free and it's essentially as long as you uh, they the beauty of AR is that you could play around with a lot of the AR tools as long as you have a computer and a webcam you could uh, you could explore AR and uh, without having to pay anything uh, the only time they want you to pay is if you want to publish to an app store and so, uh, and so all this stuff, the barrier of entry is actually really, uh, really low um, when it comes to accessing the tools. It's just a matter of how do you use those tools. That's, that becomes the difference. And so with it, I always click downloads and uh, you could download the Vuforia engine and you might have one for Android, iOS, and, and Windows, but you want to make sure to choose the Unity one. And so with that, you'll click add. You have to... Uh, download your account and sign into it after you do that what I'll do is I will download this into my project here so just figure out a, a place where you want to download it and after that once you have the SDK then you go to back to unity and what I'll do is I will create I will open up my folder that has my SDK in it right here and I will go back to unity I'll go to assets and then I'm gonna go to import package and then custom package and now that I have that I'll go to my folder that has my SDK in it and I'll go ahead and add it and so what I'll do is I'll click add it'll tell me update uh, and it says make sure that git is installed and uh, on your path environment variable so this is important make sure that you have all the git stuff involved and and so we'll click update and if you don't do that then it's gonna it's gonna mess stuff up And so, uh, once everything is installed, a great way to test it is you'll see that in the projects, you'll have a package called editor, or folder called editor, with all the Vuforia SDK stuff in it. And then you'll also have in Windows, Vuforia configuration. And we want to click that to open up our Vuforia configuration settings in our inspector. And so there's a couple of things that we need to do to make sure that it works. Uh, first and foremost we want to add a license and so you go ahead and click add license and you see I have a lot of licenses already but you could create a development key and the development key is free you just go through click get development key you name it I'll call this AR maze and then I will click confirm then you open it you copy the key and then after that you go back to Vuforia and you just paste that key in just like that very simple and then the second thing that you want to do 
is you want to make sure that we have uh, track device pose off. And the reason is, is because uh, track device pose is for extending the tracking functionality to uh, to where you, when you're not looking at the, the AR surface, whether it's an image or it's the ground, when you're not looking at the actual surface, it'll still calculate the position of the tracker based off of the information from the service previously. And so we don't want that with image targets because when you're not looking at the image target, you don't want the AR experience to work. Uh, and so when you shine your phone or anything off of the AR, off of the, the image target, you want the AR experience to stop. And the track device pose is saying that even if you're not looking at the image target, uh, it'll still try to have it on. And so we want to turn that off so we don't have that functionality. And then last but not least, in play mode, we want to make sure that it's set to webcam and then you choose whatever webcam you want. Uh, if you're going to publish to a device, then, uh, then this doesn't really matter uh, because you'll be doing some other steps to get it to your phone. But uh, if you were doing this with a webcam, just to test it out as a demo. And so make sure you choose your webcam and choose the right webcam. And so now we have everything set up for us to start creating our, our AR maze image target. And so now we're going to set up our image target in uh, Unity with our Vuforia SDK. And the goal is to not only import the image, uh, the maze image as a PNG or a JPEG, but then create an image target based off of it. And so we'll go ahead and do that. And so we're here right now and we have our maze image. And so what I could do is I could go through and I could save this. So I'll just go ahead and download this and I'll download this as a JPEG. Might as well. And so I'll download it as a JPEG. We'll say just maze design tutorial and I'll just click save. And after I do that, what I can do is I can go back to Unity and I'll go to Assets and I'll create a new folder called Images. And in that folder, what I'll do is I will just drag and drop. So I'll take my maze image that I have here. I'll just drag and drop it in there. And so right now it looks very distorted when you have it in here. And in order to change that, we'll have to change the texture type from default to Sprite 2D. And we'll click apply. And now it changes it just like that. So the next thing that we'll do is we'll actually create a new scene because it's always good to just create a new scene. And so I will create a new scene by right clicking, going to create and scene. And then I'll call this maze tutorial. I'll say AR Maze Project. It doesn't really matter what you name it, as long as you name it something. And then what I'll do is I'll start setting up my Vuforia SDK for our image target. And so with that, the first thing we want to do is we want to replace the main camera with an AR camera. And what the AR camera does is it emulates either a web camera or a phone that's how the AR stuff works. And so I'll click camera and then I'll just delete the main camera. And so now we have a main, we have a, a AR camera, which has a camera component, but also some Vuforia stuff in it. So it's just a, a, a camera with some extra bells and whistles essentially. And so now the next thing is go into Vuforia engine and then choose an image target. And this is the image target that we want. So we'll call this maze or AR maze like that and so you could double click on it to go to uh, to see what it looks like like that and so on our AR maze image right uh, it's it's currently blank so what we'll want to do is we want to uh, go to our inspector after we click on it go to an inspector make sure it's from image and then when we have our 2D texture, what we'll do is we'll select it and select the maze. And so now we have our maze here, the exact same maze that we wanted to, that we created. And so now this is our reference. 
And so now that we have our reference, uh, the next thing that we want to do is we want to save it. And then after we save it, we want to actually test to see if it works. And so a good way to test to see if it works is if we create a um, create a basic object. And so I could go and we could add a 3D cube. And right now the 3D cube is huge, so I'll just scale it down. Use the scale tool. Scale it down like that. And it might be a little difficult to see right now, so I could actually add a material to it. And so what I'll do is I will go to assets, I'll create a new folder, and this is all just to stay organized. We'll say materials, and then in the materials folder, we'll create a material right here. And I'll just call this red. And so we'll, we'll make it red. Uh, I'll give it a little, you know, I'll give it a little shimmer, might as well. And then place it there. So now we have a, a red cube on there. And so the one thing to know is that with our, with our cube, it has to be a child of the image target in order for it to work. And so the best practice is actually creating an empty object in the uh in the image target so go to create empty and notice how it's a child of the image target now uh, and we could tell by this uh, arrow here and we'll just call this ar content and so anything in this in this container right here this empty object which is pretty much just a container uh that's just going to make it uh a child of it and so anything in it will be a child of it so i'll just put that in the container and the reason this uh, is important is because anything that is shown, anything in the image target uh, that's a child will be shown. Anything that's not a child of the image target will not be shown when you shine your, your camera over it. And so the way a child works and the parent works is that the image target is a parent. So if I move this around, it'll move everything inside of its container. If I move the air content around, notice how the image target doesn't move just the container. And if I just move the cube, only the cube is going to move, not anything else. So what I'll do is I'll just turn that back to zero, take that back to zero, and there we go. So now let's actually save it. And then I'm going to test it out. So what I'll do is I'll just move this over to my other monitor. And with that other monitor, I'm going to have my image, open that up. And I'll take my webcam, as you can see here, I'll shine it at that. And I have my AR test right here. Just like that. So it works. Action and face selection allows you to, to move faces. So you can move faces all over the place just like that. And so what we're going to do is we're going to actually just move the faces or actually make it uh, scale it up. And we're going to scale it in the X and the Y or the X and the Z plane so that it covers this. So we're going to create just a, like an outline or a box. So we're just going to modify. Actually, we'll just do that with the whole object. And so we'll make it longer, make it wider. And since the pivot is in the center, we could change it to, uh, or since the pivot is on the side right here, we could actually change it to the center by clicking the center pivot button right there. And this allows us to uh, change the pivot so that we can make it a little bit more uh, easier to navigate. And so another thing that we can do is actually instead of using the, the scale tool, we could use the rec tool and see how there's bounding boxes here. So what we'll do is we could just move the bounding boxes over and it scales it correctly like that. 
And so, to have it just a little bit better, what I'll do is I'll just have a top view like that. I have ISO, but I could do orthographic as well. And I could right click and I could have it say align to the top. If I want to align to the front, I could do that, but I'll just align to the top. And then if I want a perspective view, I can, or I could take the perspective view off. So it's easier to navigate. So now we have our, our box covering it. The next thing that we want to do, and I'll just go align to top again. I want to change the material so I could actually see the uh, the actual design in the back in uh, through the object. So in order to do that, I'll go to materials. I'll create a new material, and I'll just call that transparent. And I'll add that to my object right there, just dragging it over. And then what I'll do is I'll change the color to something a little bit, uh, you know, the alpha a little bit lower. And I'll go from opaque and I'll go to transparent like that. And so what I could actually do is I could give it like a yellowish tint so that I know where the box is. So now I have a transparent box just like that. Make it a little bit more opaque. Boom. Perfect. Okay. So now that I have, eh, I'll go with the, I'll go with the blue. So now that I have it done, the next thing I could do is I could start adding a border around it. So what I'll do is I could add that border by first using the uh, face selection tool. I'll select a face and what I could do is go to the scale tool and I could scale using uh, holding shift and scaling. And so when I do that, notice how it creates a new face, right? And so I'll do that again. I'll undo it. And so normally with the scale tool, you could scale it like that, right? But if you click the face selection tool, right? So if I use the object selection, I can scale the whole object. But if I use the face selection tool, I could actually just scale down and notice how it scales the whole face. But if I hold, if I hold shift and I do that, it actually creates a new face. It creates an indent. And so what I'll do is I'll do that and I'll create that new face. So now I have a new indent right there. And so essentially, uh, with when you click shift and you modify a face, it allows for you to extrude or create new uh, bounding boxes and faces for it. And so that's uh, what we're going to do with this. So we're going to make this border wall. And in order to do that, what we can do is we could uh, hit this uh, move tool. And I'll just sort of shift it down. I'll hold shift and then I'll just drag it down. And now it creates a it creates a wall like that. So if I want to lift it up, I can, right? I'll just go ahead and lift it down. So I'll give it a little bit of space so it has some depth to it. So now if I move this around, add a new material to it, we have a container. So not too bad. So I'll add this material back to it again. And I will start to create my uh, design again. So we have our, there you go. So I'll just right click. I'll go to uh, top Now that, right? So we have our actual design here. And so one thing that I want to do is actually go through and I want to use a poly shape because these are these are all intricate designs right these are all pretty intricate and so what i want to do is i want to actually use the poly shape tool 
And what the PolyShape tool does is it allows you to click stuff, uh, click different splines and points and then create a, a custom object from there. And so what I could do is I could do that with each one of these different uh, objects right here. And so I'll do PolyShape. And I'll just hide this. And I just click. And as I click, it creates different points. And because there aren't any curves, this is a lot easier to do. You can make it as perfect or imperfect as you want. I mean, this is just all part of the creative process. So once I'm done, I just click it like that. And then I go, I could change the angle of it. And I could say extrude. Like that. And so now we have our, we have our shape right there. Pretty easy. And so I could actually do the same thing with this. If I wanted to edit the poly shape, I could do that by editing the poly shape. You know, here you go. Edit poly shape, edit polyline. We have the opportunity to do those. But what I'll do is I'll make a new poly shape. I'll go back to top and I'll do this one now. Boom. And then I just extrude it out like that, just like that. So last but not least, I will do another poly shape. And since no one's actually going to be accessing this, I'm not actually going to build that part out. And I'll just make it look like this. Perfect. So what I'll do is I'll actually just change this to two for each one of them. So two, two, and then the extrusion is two as well. And so now we have all our, we have all our shapes. We have our shapes. I could do is I could take this, select the cube, select all these faces at the top, and then I could lift these up as well. So that they're about the same height. And then lift these up. Say, looks like we'll have to lift it up one at a time. There you go. And I know I said two before, but I think I'll have to drop it down. So let's see. front we'll drop it down to I uh, will say 1.4 I'll we'll change it to 1.4 for each one of these I think that's that's good Four. like that and so now all I'll have to do is instead of it now that we have the actual maze design what I can do is I can uh, add these all to the image that we have 
And so what I'll do is I'll add the cube and all the game objects to it. And I'll just give each one of these a material, the red material that we had before, like that. And so now what I had before, and I guess I can make this a, a parent of the cube as well. And we'll just call this the base. And so at first we had this image and then in Pro Builder, we created this. And the best part about it is that we could actually scale this down. So we could scale it down however you want. So if you want to make it smaller, you can. And because it's a child of the 3D model as a child of the actual image, it's going to scale down accordingly like that. Save. And so lastly, in order for us to move this over, the best thing that we could do is make it a prefab. And prefabs are sort of uh, containers that uh, allow you to uh, optimize your images and stuff. So if you want to have your this into multiple uh, images or instantiate it or do anything, it makes it really flexible to do. And so what we'll do is I'll create a new folder, call it prefabs. And then with the prefabs folder, I'll go in it. And then what I'll do is I will say uh, maze design, maze 3D model, maze 3D design. I'll just name it something better than what I had before. And I'll just drag it down in there. And notice how with the maze 3D design, it created a design or it turned it to blue like that. So I could go inside of it and I have my 3D design there, just like that. And so now time to add it to our ARs. And so now that we have our 3D model done, right? I showed you how to use Pro Builder and I showed you how to uh, navigate it in, in an effective way. Uh, just a, you know, a brief overview of Pro Builder and just using some basic shapes and some splines. So now try to convert your design from a plat 2D design to a 3D model using Pro Builder. And if you want to make something more intricate, feel free to. If you uh, have experience with other 3D modeling software, you could create your a 3D model of your maze in that as well. It's up to you. It's just all a matter of um, really exploring the tools and thinking beyond just 2D and 3D being able to combine the two. And so, uh, so go ahead and give yourself some time and the opportunity to uh, create something and then add it to unity. Okay. So the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a object with the rigid body on it so that we can navigate our maze. And so this is adding a controller and then we're going to use, uh, essentially the physics system to have the object go through the different crevices of the maze. And so with that, let's go ahead and go back to our project. So before we go to our project, what we're going to do is we're going to create a, essentially test it out before we add it to our uh, 3D project. We're going to test it out in, before we add it to our uh, augmented reality scene. And so in order to do that, we will want to first essentially change the camera view. And so right now the game view is looking like this and that kind of sucks. So what I'll do is I'll change my camera so that it faces this way. And so in order to do that, what I'll do is I'll hit the main camera, I'll select it. Then I'll go to um, object and I'll go to align with view. So when I do that, notice how the camera changes to the view that I have in my, in my scene. So that's a that's an easy way to uh, navigate the camera like that and uh, sometimes it won't be it won't be uh, perfect and so you could just modify it with the transform tools till you get it to your liking like that and so I'll just sort of you know put this over to the side and I'll have this be a portrait 
a portrait 1920 by 1080 just like that or I'll, I'll do landscape might as well so I have my landscape view um, I'll just have that above like that yeah so I like that and so now what I'll have to do is I'll create a new sphere so 3d object sphere and what I'll do is I'll make that smaller much smaller actually so I'll make it smaller so that it fits within the walls it should fit within all the walls and I'm going to add a rigid body so you just go to components rigid body like that and you could increase the mass if you want if you wanted to make it uh, go faster and then last but not least is I'll make a material and so I have a yellow material that I created and I'll just add that to my ball right there and so now that I have that the one thing that you want to make sure to do is make sure that the uh, sphere is within the object that you have so with a 3d base design I'll just drag my sphere into that and we should be good to test it so what I'll do is I'll test it and this is just to test the functionality of it so if it works here then it'll work in AR uh, but uh, testing multiple features at once probably isn't the best thing so what I'll do is I'll essentially control the rotation since this is based on physics uh, I'll control the rotation of the 3d object like this and the um, essentially the ball should roll around and so that's the goal so we'll see we'll see how that goes and so I'll just make this a little smaller increase this a little bit more and I'll click play so it dropped down when I rotate it down ooh, up just like that rotate it down to the left Maybe kind of buggy, gonna have to work with it a little bit. It looks like that's a little too big. And so again, I'll probably have to make that smaller. Um, and so I could just test it out right now. Anything that you edit in this, won't, uh, it won't save it, but it's good to keep, it's good to keep track. And so I have this at 0.67, so I could say 0.6 is probably the best. But I'll go back to it. I will um, be able to rotate this down again. Boom. Um. And try to go to the end. like that so that works so I know that it's a uh, I have my sphere at 0.67 so I'll say 0.6 will be good and so notice when I uh, click the play button it goes back so what I'll have to do is just go to 0.6 and just type 0.6 in all the different locations it's just that's just what happens in play mode it, it doesn't uh, or at runtime or play mode it doesn't save anything so we'll have that we'll click save and so uh, I mentioned that with this, I I added something to it. So there's a plus sign and uh, to our prefab. So if I wanted to add to the prefab, um, what I could do is I could go to overrides and then I could click apply and it'll make whatever stuff I added to it, as you can see here, uh, I could apply all and it'll add it to the prefab. So I'll click apply all and now that sphere is blue. And so when we test it out again, we'll click play. And so now if I hit the design, rotate up, boom, rotate down, boom, just like that. And so we should be good with that. Now it's time to add it to our scene, our AR scene. So now we'll go to scenes, we'll go to AR 
project. We have our cube here. And what I'll do is I'll just increase this again. I don't really need the game view as much right now. And so I'll open up to our AR content. And I'll just go to our prefabs and I'll just add the prefab to our AR content like that. And it's huge right now. And so what we'll do is what we'll end up doing is actually just making it smaller. And then we'll zero it out. And make it just a little, do I need to make it smaller? I don't think I need to. Oh yeah, I do. There you go. So I'll just make it a little smaller and we'll zero it out again so that it, it fits right into it. And then from there, we can get rid of this cube. If you don't want to delete it, you could just turn it off uh, or you could delete it. It's up to you. And we are in our AR scene now. So it's connected to the AR scene. All the stuff is tested. And now we just need to see if it works in AR. And so we'll go ahead and press play after we save it. It's a AR content. And so now I have my phone and I have my maze. And it looks like it's not there for some reason. And I wonder why. I wonder, wonder why. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to figure that out. So if we go to our scene and we go to our maze and the sphere, looks like our sphere is just falling right now. Still falling. And it could be because we have, yeah, it could be for a multitude of reasons, but it looks like we forgot to add a top to it. And so what we'll want to do is we'll want to add a top to this so that it, it doesn't fall through. That looks like that's the problem. And so what we could do is we could add a plane. So a 3D object, we add a plane here. We'll just shrink it down really small. And we can rotate it, we'll say rotate it 180 degrees. And we'll have it be we'll say we'll do based off of the front. We'll have it just be just like that. And so then again I'll add that to my base. And I suppose I could add this to the base as well. So children of prefab, what I'll do is I'll add this here, add the sphere, and I'll save it, and then I'll make this, do the overrides, click apply, and now we have everything here. And to test it out, what we can do is we could go back to our, our other scene, and this scene has our 3D maze in it. And because we hit apply, we have all of our stuff in it as well. And so when we test it out, I could test it out. With our main camera. Because for some reason it's a, it's a little too small. So with the main camera, align the view. I wonder why the view is so messed up. I'll try to use a line to view again with the camera. Oh, it's because we have our clipping planes. There you go. Perfect. So I just want to change the clipping planes. 
and then we'll click align with view again. Perfect. And so now we just want to make sure that if we rotate this around, it's not going to, uh, the ball is not going to fall out. So we'll click play. Everything works so far. Uh oh. And that might be because we put the, the base in here. So we'll just do 0 0.6 and 0 0.6. Our scale is off. So we'll just open the prefab again and just make sure that this is just outside of it, just like that. So playing around with this, it, it, it often just takes a little bit of time to get used to, but with that, we can test it out. We will Try this seems like it works and then if we have it here notice how it works too it's like that like that so now that it works we have all our overrides. We just click apply to all those. Everything is good. We'll go back to our AR maze. We'll click save. And with the AR maze, we have our AR content. And the AR content has our sphere, and then it has our base with all four objects connected to it. And time to test it out again. So I have my image here. I'm going to try to look at it and huh it's not working I wonder why like where is like the 3d model is showing up but not not the sphere so let's actually look and see what's going on here where's my sphere at so if you look at the sphere it's actually actually falling really Bad. I mean, it's just falling as you can see, and so that means that the, the the detection is not actually picking it up. And so, in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, I'll get rid of that. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to stop play, and we're going to have to tinker around with it a little bit. So, first things first is we want to make sure that the collision detection is changed to from discrete to continuous. And then the last thing that we're going to need to do is we're actually going to need to open up the script and disable some stuff. And so we double click on the default event trackable handler. And when you do that, it opens up Visual Studio, which is the thing that you had to download uh, Microsoft Visual Studio. And we'll have this script here. And we're not going to go into details of like what a script is and how to use it, but there are some things that you could just do really quickly to, to make this work. And so the first thing is over here where it says a uh, variable collider components. And this is usually on line 186. You can comment this out because we don't actually need this. And so there's a button here called command or comment out lines, which is control C or control E and C. Uh, you press this and you, you know, comment it out. And all this is, is just two, uh, two uh, slash marks. And so in order to comment out, you could just go two slashes and it turns it green or it turns it to a different color and it comments it out. So you just comment out um, all the colliders, right? So um, you'll comment out collider components. Then you comment out these two lines under disable colliders. So I'll comment those out and comment that out, just like that. And so when I do that, I'll click save. And from there, we should be ready to go. So it'll compile the scripts. Make sure to only compile, only take out those lines though. So we want to comment out uh, variable collider components, 
and then for each variable component and then just pretty much all the references to the to the colliders that's what we want to comment out which is those three lines and so now i'll save it i have my sphere like that i have the yellow everything looks good and so now what i'll do is i will go ahead and click play okay time to test it out now so i have it here rotates rotates Takes a little bit of mangling, but we got it working. There we go. So we have to maneuver it a little bit. Like that and so it works a lot better if you have paper obviously but that is the that is the gist of it we have a AR maze you rotate it around you rotate it around the ball moves and you could add some goals to it so this is an interactive piece that you could uh, create some awesome stuff with and so now that we have this done, right, uh, the next thing you could do is focus on activity three, which is expanding on it. You know, so take what we've learned in here with Pro Builder and designing and, you know, setting up some basic AR stuff and then expanding on it, being able to build on what you learn, create other designs to navigate, uh, turn this into a game with multiple levels and, you know, maybe have some checkpoints and stuff like that. Uh, I'm not a game developer, so I don't develop games, but what you can do is you can create stuff that allows for you to uh, make some wonderful, impactful stuff. So it's a, it's, a, it's a great opportunity to explore. And so as we wrap up the course, right, uh, we did a lot of stuff. It was, a, it was a lot of stuff that we got to play around with in Unity and with AR, and really you got a glimpse of what it's like to be an a AR creator. Uh, the highs and the lows, right? And so with it, we designed a maze image, we set up Unity, we imported the Vuforia Engine SDK package, we set up the augmented reality image target, we built the maze design with ProBuilder, we also added a rigid body object to navigate the maze, we debugged the experience because there's always going to be bugs, and then we also opened up Visual Studio and we modified some of the code that makes the AI work even better. And so with all that, we were able to create something that was very interesting, you know, very uh, immersive and engaging. Uh, instead of having to play, uh, have a controller, you know, like a game controller, you could actually use art. You could use images. You could use uh, print media to uh, control digital assets. And I think that's the beauty of AR. And so with it, I really hope that you enjoyed this, enjoyed the... Uh, opportunities to explore something very simple in AR, uh, learn a little bit about Pro Builder, learn a little bit about um, essentially Unity and uh, just expanding your horizons and adding to the tool belt. And so with that, I hope you have a, a great time and be sure to check out all the other AR tutorials and creative tutorials that I uh, put out. And uh, from there, have a good one.